So now that we have uh, you know SAN installed and configured, we'll get back to home tab of the virtual machine and we'll create a new virtual machine and this time I'm going to create uh, Oracle Enterprise Linux 6.3 uh, so I'll take you through all these steps of installation I'm sure you must you all must know about the installation steps but if at all somebody is unaware of it uh, they can uh, seek help from this video about the installation so I have uh, OEL 6.3 64-bit already selected if at all you don't have it selected over here if it doesn't reflect you can always click on browse and just find out wherever you have kept your operating system then you can highlight it and then you can click on open so I'll click on next I'll mention the machine name as node 1 since I'm going to use two nodes and then I'll give the location where this node should actually uh, be installed node 1 okay and then I'll click on next I don't have to make any changes over here I'll click on next again I'll give 4 GB of RAM uh, for this machine if at all you have more RAM it is even better and if you tell if at all you have less RAM uh, then you can also assign 2 GB per machine or per node so 4 GB is what I'm assigning as of now I'll click on next I'll select use host only networking again like I selected in SAN LSI logic is what it is recommended it shows over here I'm not going to change it I'll keep it like that click on next iSCSI so uh, even the disk uh, that is going to be used inside this node after the uh, installation will be small computer system interface and that is what it is recommended over here so we'll not change it either we'll click on next create a new virtual disk and then store a uh, virtual disk as a single file I will give 50 GB for this machine or the node let us not call this as a node because it is still not inside the setup of uh, rack uh, this is just a machine which I am preparing as a prerequisite to install rack on it so this is a 50 GB which I am going to assign and I will click on next then uh, that's all I'll click on next again alright so this is where I can see the summary of uh, my machine Linux machine uh, node 1 and the location and all that hard disk is 50 GB memory is 4 GB uh, it shows in MBs though uh, network adapter is host only so I have to customize the hardware to add another host only network adapter over here because I'm going to use private uh, I'm sorry I'm going to use public IP and the private IP both while I'm configuring rack or right before configuring rack this is a kind of a prerequisite that I'm supposed to set so I, I will have to click on customize hardware I'll have to select the network adapter then I'll have to click on add I'll again have to select the network adapter and then click on next I'll select this as host only a private network is shared with the host so any private network uh, which I'm going to create will be shared with the host operating system it is what it says and that's what host only means I'll click on finish okay I'll click on close now now if I look at the summary or the configuration of my machine it looks like network adapters are two now one should be used for public later in this video and then the other one will be used as private uh, power on this virtual machine after the creation okay I'll click on finish and I'll wait for the machine to uh, boot well uh, now uh, it says it gives me certain options install or upgrade existing system then install basic video driver rescue installed system boot from local drive memory test and all that so I would select the first option that which is highlighted now install or upgrade an exist existing system so I'm not going to upgrade I will be installing it so the same uh, option will take you to either of these things that you would want to configure so I'll, cl I'll hit enter I'll wait for the machine to boot Okay, now it says uh, OK or disk found so we will not test the media before the installation we will straight away click on skip or uh, select skip uh, with the right arrow on the keyboard and then hit enter this will take another half minute I believe ok it says media detected found local installation media
okay uh, I'll just maximize it temporarily I'm maximizing it unless and until I don't install the virtual uh, VMware tools after this installation I cannot permanently maximize this uh, so I'll click on next this is the page of 6.3 this is how it look like it looks like uh, now the default language is English US English next uh, it says what type of devices will your installation involve so basic storage devices is what I will use okay now it says uh, the storage device below may contain data so like I have just added 50 GB I'm sure that there is no data inside it is it is just a plain disk so I would not select no keep any data I would select yes discard any data now it is giving me uh, an option where I can specify the host name so I would give it as node one dot cluster.com and on the same page at the bottom it says configure network so I'll click on configure network over here like I have added two Ethernet adapters both of those adapters are being reflected over here so I'll select ETH 0 first and I'll click on edit and now I'll uh, change the system ETH 0 to just ETH 0 I'll select connect automatically I'll get into IPv4 settings since I have to manually mention the IP address I'll select manual option over here then I'll click on add now I'll be adding 147.43.0.1 that is the machine IP address public IP address to be more specific and then I'll also assign the subnet mask to it which is going to be common for all the IP addresses that falls inside the class B uh, that is 147 so the subnet, uh, the subnet mask will be 255.255.0.0 alright that's all about this uh, I'll click on we'll have to click on apply I don't know why is it not showing let me just check alright no problem I'll just cancel I'll, I'll actually click on delete I'll, I'll add this again I'll add a fresh one 147.43.0.1 then I have 255 255.0.0 I don't have to uh, assign the gateway I'll just straight away click on apply right before I click on apply I'll reconfirm it's 147.43.0.1 that is the public IP address uh, where the machine will be identified and since it falls into the class B IP address then it net mask will be this okay I'll click on apply now now I'll get into ETH1 I'll click on edit I'll select um, I'll, I'll check connect automatically I'll rename it to ETH1 then I'll get into the IPv4 settings I have to put the IP address manually I'll select add this IP address that I'm assigning now will be considered as the private IP so you can identify the private IP soon after you see see uh, this 192.168.0.1 actually falls into the IP addresses class C and the net mask net mask for that class C IP addresses will remain as 255.255.255.0 all right now I'll click on apply that's it I have ETH 0 and ETH 1 all set now I'll uh, click on close so I have configured the uh, IP addresses for the respective network adapters and I have also mentioned the host name over here that is node1.cluster.com now I'll click on next I'll select the region or the country over here I'll click on next again I'll have to mention the password uh, I'll just mention it, as, uh, mention it as Oracle or I'll put it my name and I'll click on next it says you have provided a weak password it is based on a dictionary word I can cancel it if at all I don't like this password or if I'm fine with it I can click on use anyway so I will select use anyway and now it says which type of installation would you like it says use all space replace uh, existing Linux 6 systems shrink current space and options like that so we are not bothered about these options we will manually select something that is the reason we will use create custom layout so what it says manually create your own custom layout on the selected devices uh, using our partitioning tool so Linux will provide you a partitioning tool 
uh, which we will see it on the next page I'll click on next so select cre create custom layout now over here 50 GB due to the operating system difference it shows 51 though I have added 50 GB I'll select create then I'll uh, let this option be remain like that that is standard partition then I'll click on create again over here I'll select root as the mount point first I'll assign 50 uh, sorry 15 GB to root then uh, I'll, I'll, I'll again select create I'll let the standard partition remain like that I'll click on create again now I'm creating a partition called u01 which is uh, uh, I'll give 30 GB to it which is the fixed size of course and then I'm left over with 6 GB but the RAM that I have assigned for this machine was 4 GB so ideally as per that I'm about I'm supposed to uh, first of all we'll uh, select this standard uh, partition so I'll be selecting the file system I'm going to assign the swap space since I have selected 4 GB of RAM and uh, I'm supposed to give swap size double the size of 4 GB which is 8 GB since I do not have that much I'll assign the entire uh, 6 GB to swap but ideally we are supposed to assign 8 GB okay so click on ok so 199 MB is left over no problem we'll click on next now so we all together have three partitions now uh, one is u01 which has uh, taken 30 GB one is root which is taken 15 GB last is swap which is taken 6 GB so let's click on next it says the following pre-existing devices have been selected to be formatted destroying all data we don't have the data at all first of all so we can click on format the partitioning options you have selected will now now be written to disk so the partitions that we have selected will actually be written to the disk it what is what it means the 15 GB 30 GB and the swap size any data on delete uh, any data on deleted or reformatted partitions will be lost so we somehow don't have the data on the partitions that we have just created it they are the fresh partitions so we can straight away click on write changes to the disk alright so uh, it is creating the file systems uh, on devsda1 and all that it shows uh, let us just wait for it for a while alright install bootloader and dvsda let this option be uh, selected as it is as default now it says retrieving installation information for oracle linux server this is going to take uh, another minute i believe alright the default installation of oracle linux server is basic server install so this is what it is talking about basic server install we can keep this as basic server itself you can optionally select a different set of software now so we can either select database server uh, we can select web server anything that we like as per our requirement so I'm, I'm keeping it as basic server only over here I'll select it as customized now since we have to select all the packages that are supposed to be configured and installed uh, I'll click on next now alright so I'll highlight this base system first then I'll go here I'll uh, from the keyboard I'll use control plus A and I'll select all optional packages same applies to servers I'll get into uh, servers I'll highlight servers then I'll uh, whatever the packages inside servers are mentioned over here like you can see it on the mouse pointer I'll use control A and then select all optional packages again same applies to web services control A and select optional packages let me just quickly select all these optional packages now alright since I have all the packages selected I am not going to select anything from the languages if at all there is a requirement for you to select the languages you can select any of the languages from the list of languages that are mentioned over here ok I'll just click on next and uh, it says checking dependencies in packages selected for installation it will take maybe a minute or so let us just wait for it now it says starting the installation process so let us wait 
uh, now it is going to reflect all the packages that we have selected on the screen so maybe uh, I think the packages would be more than or above 2000 uh, packages uh, let us that uh, let us wait until those packages are completely you know installed so starting installation process is, is what it says preparing transaction from installation source okay alright so now it is starting the packages uh, it says installing ISO codes and things like that so how many packages have been completed until now N 8 and how many packages are left over is 2348 so let us wait for all the packages to complete and then the installation of uh, most of the installation part would be completed what else uh, we would be left over after it would be the post installation steps for Linux configuration so let us wait until these packages are totally installed Okay, looks like all the packages have been installed and it says congratulations your Oracle Linux server installation is complete uh, please reboot uh, the installed system note that updates may be available in short to properly functioning your system and installation of these updates is recommended after the reboot well we will ignore this we will straight away reboot it now So it's rebooting. Maybe it'll take a minute or so. Okay, so this is how the screen of Oracle Linux Server 6.3 or uh, Oracle Enterprise Linux 6.3 looks like. so like I said uh, we are left over with certain uh, post installation steps so this is where the screen will uh, let us reach so I'll just forward it yes I agree the license terms click on forward uh, no uh, setup software updates no I prefer not to register uh, at a later time okay no thanks I'll connect later uh, finish update setup forward uh, I'll create a user later I'll just click on forward here I'll set up the time which is uh, 657 as of now so I'm using a 24 hour format I'll click on forward uh, I don't want to enable the K dump uh, I will just click on finish that's all so uh, now the Linux server is almost ready it is just that we are supposed to install the VMware tools we'll wait until this boots okay, here we go so we have uh, the machine up now since we have completed the post installation steps now I will log in to the uh, this is this Oracle user is the default user uh, and I have I'll have to log in as root with other users. So I'll click on other root and the password. Then I'll log in. So I'm logged in. Maybe this machine will take a few seconds to. Okay, it says you are currently trying to run as the root super user. The super user is specialized account so it is giving you the description about the super user that you are actually logged in with so we can straight away click on do not show this message again and click on close all right so we will just wait for a few more seconds before installing the VMware tools okay so I will have to click on VM and then install VMware tools. I'll just drag this like we've had the same uh, method in the other uh, operating systems of Linux. Same thing. I'll have to open a new terminal now. 
I'm on the desktop already I'll just type ls to see the list of things that are available on the desktop so I have VMware tools I'll just quickly untar this for that I'll use star hyphen xpf then VMware tools and I'll wait for this VMware tools folder to untar all the packages for me all right I'll type in ls again I have a new folder created this time called VMware tools distrib uh, distrib so I'll get into VMware, VMware Tools Distrib and I'll type in ls again. I'll have to run this script for all the other packages to be successfully installed and uh, for the VMware Tools to work properly on the uh, Linux virtual machine. So this is a Perl script so I'll have to type in Perl then I'll type in VMware and I'll hit enter. Okay, it says installing VMware tools. In which directory do you want to install the binary files? USR bin is the default directory. So there are certain uh, steps that this script will take me through, and I will just have to either enter, uh, uh, either hit a enter, or uh, I either I'll either have to type a uh, you know a value like yes or something like that. So we will see it step by step. So in this step, it says in which directory do you want to install the binary files? The default uh, you know folder that it uh, already considers is USR bin like it is mentioned over here so we will not change this value I'll just hit enter for the default value to be considered it says what is the directory that contains the init directories so I won't change this either I'll just hit enter what is the directory that contains init scripts <coughs> alright fine in which directory do you want to install the daemon files USR bin alright hit enter again in which directory do you want to install the library files hit enter again the path USR mm, the path USR library VMware tools does not exist currently this program is going to create it okay so if it doesn't have any such directory it will create it is this what you want it is what it is asking and the default value is yes so I'll just hit enter so that it can create a directory by itself Alright, in which directory do you want to install the common agent library files? So there are certain files that uh, the OS uh, uh, at the OS level which are uh, required. So that is what it is asking us for. And the default directory for this is USR LIB. So I'll just hit enter. In which directory do you want to install the common agent transient files? Keep that as a default location. Hit just hit enter. In which directory do you want to install the documentation files? Just hit enter. The path USR share VMware tools does not exist currently like it just uh, mentioned it to us earlier over here same thing is being given here USR LIB wasn't there so it created USR LIB for us now it is going to create USR share for us automatically if we hit enter okay the installation of VMware tools for Linux completed successfully and then what it says before running VMware tools for the first time you need to configure it by invoking okay so you just have to hit enter over here as well so it is just running that Perl script which I have started VMware config tools Perl. Do you want to uh, do you want this program to invoke the command for you now? Yes. So it has first created all the directories over here, all these things. Then it started running that Perl script, and now it says it is initializing. So we will wait for about a few seconds over here, or for a minute. Then uh, the entire VMware tools will be installed, and soon after the tools are installed, we will have to reboot the system for the VMware tools to take effect and uh, VMware tools one of one of the special features over here is HGFS uh, like it says over here VMware host guest file sharing so whenever you want to share the files that are on your host file system you can do it with this feature and if you do not install VMware tools you will not be able to enable this feature called uh, host guest file sharing so you basically cannot share any folders that are there or that are residing on your host file system to your guest file system so this is something which is mandatory and as a package included inside the VMware tools so just hit enter over here okay the VM uh, VM block enables dragging or copying files do you wish to enable this feature yeah go ahead would you like to enable VMware automatic kernel modules okay 
I'm just hitting enter. I'm not changing any value over here. Thin print provides. I don't know what does this actually work for. I just hit enter for this. taking some time Now what it says, uh, disabling, do you want to enable guest be goth, okay, just hit enter over here, hit enter again. Okay, so it is, it is running few drivers or it is actually enabling or starting few drivers in the background. So let us wait for it to get completed. it looks like it is almost done now okay so that's all so it left me back again where I actually started from that's all so I'll straight away have to exit and I will quickly restart my machine now So soon after I restart the machine only then the VMware tools effect will take place correctly. Okay. So we'll quickly restart the machine and then your machine will be all set. Alright, here we go. The machine has been restarted now. I'll log into the machine as a root user. Now let us see if I if if the virtual machine uh, tools that the VMware tools basically that I have just installed if they're working fine or not okay I'll just click on this uh, button all right this full screen has been occupied now this means the VMware tools have been successfully installed. The other way to check it around or to cross check is if I am able to share the folders or not. If I get into the settings and if I get into the options, shared folders options is disabled. If I enable it and if at all I try to share any folder, like if I add a folder and then if I check if all the folders are actually uh, whatever folder that I'm sharing is actually reflecting inside this or not will give me a confirmation uh, let me share this 11g release to 64 bit okay I'll click on ok now I'll open the terminal I'll log in as a root user cd mnt gfs this is the host guest file sharing which uh, which is a feature only enabled uh, after the VMware tools installation okay so I'm typing ls I can see that 11g release to p3 folder uh, is reflecting here and all the contents inside the folder can also be seen like this okay so it means uh, the installation has been successfully done of Oracle Enterprise Linux 6.3 and the virtual uh, VMware tools on it as well. That's all we will uh, share.
shut down this machi machine and we'll have to clone this machine so that we can create a cluster uh, setup uh, actually one of the prerequisites so uh, for you to clone the machine in the virtual machine environment you have to shut the machine down first so that's what I'm going to do now